Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I want to thank God, you know, for this time. This chance here. I thank God for what He's doing, for what He has done, and what He will do in the future. My name was the Reverend Jason J. Cunningham. Uh, another name I have, a nickname or stage name for musical purposes is J. Scribbles. We'll be sharing some of the music a little later. So, um, I'm from the Lord's House of Prayer for All People. It's my church I serve at, located 9318 Southwestern. Los Angeles, California, zip code 90047. The number we can be reached at is our 424-203-9651. Now, before I go any further, the first thing I want to do is I want to give reverence. I want to give reverence and praise to my Father, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I give praise to God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Ghost. Next, I would like to give another reverence for Dr. Thomas Blackwell, the President, CEO, and the visionary for this KTYM broadcasting. located here Los Angeles, California Inglewood, California to be exact next I want to give like a special special thanks for my friend Pastor Charles Ashley He pastors the uh, Perfect Peace Church located 11151 Broadway, Los Angeles, California. Next, last but not least, I got to, you know, give reverence, you know, and, um, more thanks for my senior senior pastor so uh, Reverend Gregory White for the Lord's House of Prayer for All People Church where, Church where we serve located once again 9318 South Western Los Angeles, California. Before I go further, I would like to share uh, my song. It's uh, one of my songs. It was released a couple years ago. You know, it's on um, streaming platforms worldwide. It's song, song. It's name. You know, you want to say it. It's, it's called. You know, you want to say it. And this here, it meets the needs, you know, the young people that's lost and that's, that's trying to find their way in this world. And it's going through trials and tribulations because I've been there. Been there as a young person. You know, and when you need direction, you check this out. You know you want to say it. You know you 
won't say it, you know you won't say it, you know you won't say it, but won't say it, gon' say it. You know you won't say it, you know you won't say it, you know you won't say it, but won't say it, gon' say it. Screw speed, the illest we ever heard spit it, we ever heard spit it, heard spit it, gon' say it. Screw speed, the illest we ever heard spit it, we ever heard spit it, heard spit it, gon' say it. After all the stress and after listening in the juice of the game They hit somebody's man and picture so vivid and make it so plain But so complex it's the same I don't have to refrain I hold my head in the state that what I'm hearing is pitiful Trading is despicable To get a whole of script lyrics feeling every syllable This is enough to you and help you get through difficult times whenever they come Got some therapeutic music to use it as needed when needed So tell me what's the thumb So facing this accurate, the immaculate Been told from a wealthy but they all over time and time again It's a bummer and a rhyme for trains They come with my brain that's in over there I'm on the success of comfort, I'm on the something vibing new Vibing the truth and advise you to vibe to a two And you will limit your do, don't forget it I put you up on something that was going to not fall like the prodigal son I'm on one man, just scribble, sit pop for the special content I'm second and none Say it, no, you won't say it You know you won't say it You know you won't say it But won't say it, gon' say it No, you won't say it You know you won't say it You know you won't say it But won't say it, gon' say it the illest we ever heard spit it. We ever heard spit it. Heard spit it. Gone say it. Damn, screw speed. The illest we ever heard spit it. We ever heard spit it. Heard spit it. Gone say it. I'm hitting you from the heart of the chalk. I'm trying to be exact with a product stick jack. But the closest to coming to cracks. I'm taking it back to the scheme of the rap. Keeping it intact. The dumb voice and the influence over all so many kids. Two separate compete the recipients of harsh judges. In and out so many bids. Worth the defeat and our purpose. So we can build up what you try to destroy And you find you're putting away a little girl or a boy When you refuse to employ And you ignore a system to set up Until they let off over killing I turn it instead of turning the faces to prison Turning to making more places of learning I'm yelling and burning the sign Keeping my stride Just have to get that on my chest Over my man Just scribble sit by for this special contest Y'all want to rest You know you won't say it You know you won't say it You know you won't say it But won't say it Gon' say it You know you won't say it you know you won't say it You know you won't say it But won't say it, gon' say it Screw speed, the illest We ever heard spit it We ever heard spit it Heard spit it, gon' say it Damn, screw speed, the illest We ever heard spit it We ever heard spit it Heard spit it, gon' say it Yes, yes, yes Praise the Lord for that Yeah, he, uh, he gave me that drop that in my spirit um, several years ago, you guys can check out the links. You know my songs, and it's J Scribbles. You see it there on the screen. Spotify, SoundCloud, YouTube. You know my stuff. You know dealing with the gram is uh, Jason Scribbles. One word. That's uh, Instagram. Jason Scribbles. One word. Now, before we go any further, let's pray. Father God, we come before you right now in the precious, mighty, and wonderful name of Jesus. We come before you, Lord, with presenting you, Lord. Presenting to you, Lord. Presenting ourselves to you, Lord. Meekness, sincerity. We come, Lord. We say, Lord, search our hearts. Try our reins. We praise you, God. We praise you for who you are, Lord. Cleanse us, Father. We praise you for who you are. We praise you for your love and your mercy, God. And we pray, God, before we go any further, Lord, you touch our hearts. Lord, forgive us for our sins, our transgressions shortcomings and sins God cleanse us right now Lord cleanse us Lord from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet purge us God with your hyssop purge us with your hyssop if you see anything that's not like you you take it right now God remove those things that are not like you and replace them with your qualities your attributes Father and we pray God you prepare our hearts and our minds to receive your word right now, Lord, to receive from you, God. 
Prepare our hearts, God. I pray, Lord, you take me, you hide me behind the cross. It be less of me and more of you, God. Show up and show out, Lord. Meet the needs of this here, your people. And we give you glory. And we call it done. We praise you. We praise you right now in Jesus' name. We pray, amen. So today, we're going to be talking about how low will you go? That's going to be the name of this sermon here. How low will you go? The, the scripture text will be Matthew chapter 27, verses 45 through 56, and First Peter chapter 3, 19 through 20. How low will you go? Has God been good to you? You feeling high? You feeling good? You feeling lifted up? I'm pretty sure that song it, it got you a little motivated, a little pump. It got me pumped. I have a question for you though. How low will you go? How low are we willing to go? Hmm. How low? Really? How low? How low will you go for Jesus? Now that right there might kind of throw you for a loop, like. But I want you to remember something. I want you to think about something during this time right here. Remember that Jesus went low. He went to the lowest parts because he went to hell for three days and he preached to those spirits that were in prison. Remember that. Yes, he came. He lived a sinless life. He came with love, mercy, and truth. But he was crucified as well. He was crucified. He came to fulfill a purpose. He came for a purpose. And that purpose was to save people, save us for, from our sins. He gave his life a ransom for many. And that was his purpose was to fulfill the will of God which was to become the propitiation the propitiation for our sins and he was crucified he hung upon a tree he was crucified he was buried and he laid there and he, he didn't just lay there but he went to hell and preached to those prisons he went to the lowest of lows so how low will you go? how low will we go? To those who have been delivered, I have a question. Are you prepared to go back to that muck and mire and go get the people stuck and lift them up to where you are and point them to Christ? That's the question. It's easy to judge. It's easy to forget what we've been delivered from, what we've been saved from, and the stuff that we used to do, and look at somebody else and judge them, and look down on them, and frown on them. It's easy. It's, it seems like we get amnesia to the fact that we was once there with them. It's amazing how we're so quick to talk about people, but we forget about our own stuff. So the question is, now that you know the context now of what I'm talking about, how low will you go? Matthew chapter 27 verses 45 through 56. It reads as follows. <laughs> now from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness over all the land. And about the ninth hour, this is Matthew chapter 27 verses 45 through 56. Now from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness over all the land. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, 
Why is thou forsaken me? Why have you forsaken me? Some of those who stood there when they heard that said, this man is calling for Elijah. Immediately one of them ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine and put it on a reed and offered it to him to drink. The rest said, let him alone. Let us see if Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth quaked, and the rocks were split, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised, and coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went to the holy city and appeared to many. So when the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and the things that had happened, they feared greatly, saying, Surely this was the Son of God. And many women who followed Jesus from Galilee ministering to him were there looking on from afar, among whom were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's sons. In Matthew 27, 45 through 56, we visit Jesus dying on a cross. We see that from the sixth hour, which is noon, Jewish time, you know, you know in the Western time too, it, it's like, you know, it, 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 talking about noon here, so Jewish time, it's noon, midday. It's noon from the sixth hour to the Ninth hour, 3 p.m. It was unusual darkness. It was all across that land. The scholar suggested, and it's, it's pretty clear, that not only was the darkness physical, but it was spiritual. They had taken the Lord of glory and hung him on a cross. In verse 47, the bystanders misinterpreted Jesus' words and thought he was calling for Elijah. An extraordinary light gave intelligence of the birth of Christ in chapter, the uh, second chapter, Matthew, verse 2. Therefore, it was proper that an extraordinary darkness should notify his death, for he is the light of the world. So once again, that would make sense for the darkness to be both spiritual and physical. And I would go on to say that it was a three-hour glimpse of the spiritual state of creation during the seven-year tribulation to come, when the Holy Spirit is taken out of the world. Oh, that's another subject. With the believers in the world, with the believers and the Holy Spirit removed from the world, it's going to be total chaos, man. Seven-year tribulation. Make sure you get right. And that way you won't get left. He's coming back, y'all. Jesus is coming back. So the question remains, how low will you go? How low will you go to save a loved one that seems unlovable? Can you disagree without being disagreeable? If you notice in verse 46, Christ's experience in the separation from his father during the darkness was the most grievous of his sufferings. He didn't say, why am I scourged? Or why are they spitting on me? Or why am I nailed to the cross? Or nor did he say to his disciples, Why have you forsaken me? But when his father stood at a distance, turned his back, when his father turned his back on him, he cried out this in verse 50. Jesus yielded up the ghost. That was the time of the evening sacrifice in Jewish culture and the time when the pastoral lamb was killed. Christ, our Passover, was sacrificed for us. He offered himself being the priest as well as the sacrifice. In verse 51, see, the temple had three main parts. The courts, the holy place, where only the priests could go, and the most holy place where only the high priest could enter. And that was only one time a year. And it was to atone for the sins of the people. 
just as our Lord Jesus expired when the priests were officiating in the temple, it might be our witnesses, uh, uh, the veil of the temple was rent and torn. That veil was torn. And it was torn by an invisible power, which we know who that invisible, invisible power is. It was God. He tore the veil himself. That veil which parted between the holy place and the most holy, the earthquake. Never before did the whole creation groan under such a burden as the Son of God being crucified and the guilty wretches to crucify him. The earth was groaning. It was a big, a big earthquake. Unusual. The timing. And then the, the rent was torn. They had never seen that before. The earthquake, it signified the fatal blow now given to the devil's kingdom. The tearing of the curtain, the veil, it symbolized that the barrier between God and people was removed. Now, all people are free to approach God because of Christ's sacrifice for our sins. In verse 53, people came out of the graves. They went and appeared to many. These saints that arose were the present trophies of the victory over the powers of death. He thus led captivity captive. The bodies of all the saints shall in the fullness of time rise again. Oh yeah. In verse 54, the centurions, fearing greatly, which were the soldiers not so susceptible to the impressions of fear or pity, yet they were convinced. You see, no spirit is too big or too bold for the power of Christ to break or humble. Point blank. So, how low will you go? That's the question. How low will you go? Before I go f f further, we got another song. I, 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 I got another song I'm going to play here. And um, it's talking about the warfare because this whole thing light versus the darkness, Jesus sacrificing his life for the sins. We have. Uh, we have naysayers, haters, critics, but we have the main one we have besides a war with the flesh and ourselves and with the world and culture is we have a real foe, the devil. And when you understand who you are, once you let this you let this soak into you, you, you start to realize you tap into you call upon Christ, you give yourself to Christ, you're walking with Christ, you start to realize who you are in Christ. You understand that you're at war. In the same way he's coming at you with temptations and trials and, and tactics, you have to be equipped to fight them off. You can't run or hide. This is war. And you got to take them to war. And you take them to war, drop the torch. Jam with the 
jam, I make you want to scram. My line, man, I make them meet the spiritual frying pan. Pan handle, come with a scandal, I blow it to candle. Out you and your mans and cutting the handle with a handle. Sample of ample, forces of scorching the tramples. You and them scammers make you a definite example. Who think they can handle the most high God? Hold me on post so I boast to my God. Do the atrocious with ferocious lyrics to the coast of spirits. Still fans in the hair is the burden and wears them. Jehovah didn't sit the spares on them. We tears on them. Think the coast is clear. Right back there on them Instigators get turned to tomatoes and prune Him and the goon but catching the blues Since Christ been in the tomb Adrenaline tubes The high planes in the fire Came a lot being a transpire So you know that the fire rain So turner, so winner, full burner Table turner, but a turner, but a discerner Turning them clouds in the laughing stock Make all of them drop till the paragraph is stopped Make them do fade away and miss all they shots Look the devil in his face and say that's all you got Deceive one third of the angels and they call you high Wanna tip you to the top, to the earth you drop The equivalence is zero to the work you got My lyrics hurts the blocks as I work the clock Baby, it's torture My esophagus be the pipeline, your veins tight rhyme They can bump you in the nighttime. Even the sunshine, you feel a breeze in your spiritual Crust demons pitiful with these lyrical lyrical flows Get it, I guess not God commences to bless how rhymes that'll make them so hot i make your heart and your chest out Vital organ, I pour in lyrical rap poison Face the joyful noise when you're feeling it Screaming, that's poison Back roars and swoops to embassies and enemies Make can feel every one of these Hot shots and plenty of these One of some of these the devil think twice for he troubles me When he come at me, I rain bumble a ton of these And 1 Peter 3, 19 through 20, let's, let's take a look, shall we? For 1 Peter 3, 19 through 20, it reads as follows. By whom also he went and preached to the spirits in prison, who formerly were disobedient, when once the divine long-suffering waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight souls, were saved through water. Remember I said, he went to hell to preach to the spirits that were in prison down there for three days. And then he rose with all power in his hand. And he's seated now at the right hand of the Father. And he's making intercession for me and you, for those who are saved and that come to the full knowledge of him. And we praise God for that. And he has, he done his part. He done his part. He given gifts he giving gifts to men so the question is what will you do what will Reverend Jason do I'm going to tell you what Reverend Jason's going to do what I'm going to do I'm going to stay on fire for Christ and I'm going to keep spreading the word and keep preaching and ministering and spitting these flows and reaching to the lost and doing my part we all have a part to play but the question again is how low will you go so we know when we talking concerning these uh soldiers here the um centurions centurions in matthew chapter 27 in verse 54 the centurions fearing greatly which were soldiers not so susceptible to fear or pity you get they were convinced you see no spirit is too big or too bold for the power of Christ to break or humble 
In 1 Peter 3, 19 through 20, it shows that Christ's good news is not limited. It's not limited. It has been preached in the past as well as in the present, and it's going to the dead as well as to the living. It showed that. God has given everyone a chance to come to him. But this does not imply a second chance for those who reject Christ. You can't reject them and then say, oh, well, you know, God has given us chances. Nobody has an excuse. So how low will you go? In 1 Peter 3, 19 through 20, we noticed it. Jesus went down there. He went down there just for them. And he got up in Matthew 28 and 1 to come back just for us. God is always after somebody else. The Lord wants to use you to get to somebody else. And that's what I'm saying. How low will we go? Because really the Lord, he wants to use us because he wants to get to somebody else who's lost. He's always, he's, listen, Jesus, he came to seek and save that which was lost. He said that. He declared that. And that's what the Lord's after. He wants to use you and use me to get to somebody else. And he wants to use those who are in that muck and that mire. Mm -hmm. The same places that we've been delivered from. He wants to use me and you to go back and to reach out to them people to bring them to bring them where we are so that they can have a chance to have a chance to the right to the tree of life to receive eternal life themselves so how long will you go In these times we have seen, we've seen a nationwide, well, worldwide, as a matter of fact, we've seen a worldwide pandemic hit. Last year was one of those years a lot of people would like to forget about. We've seen a lot of uh, nonsense going on in this nation, in particular, dealing with the social unrest. We, 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 we seen the mishaps, miscommunications and misinterpretations. We've seen police brutality. We need, we need reform. But there is one solution. We've seen mass shootings last several years. We've seen them like we have never before seen them, right? And there's one solution, and that solution is Jesus Christ. It's not going to be, it's not going, it's not going to be simple sometimes to conversate with, conversate with those who seem. Like it just ain't lovable. That's why I said in the beginning, can you love the unlovable? Can you disagree and not be disagreeable? How low, how low will you go? Co-workers, because we getting, you see a, of a, a lot of restrictions, you know, are lifted now. And people are getting returning to work. You know, when you're sitting there working a job, or you're starting a company, starting for those of you that's running businesses. You know, and sometimes you know you run into people, you run into those who just. negative mindsets and what we're going to do in those situations 
That right there, we shouldn't really be crying out, oh, move that situation from me. We should more so be crying out, take us through it. Use us in these situations. Because since the fall of man, naysayers, man, came about. Critics came. Culture came. The flesh. Since the fall of man. The question is, though, how low will you go to even try to reach out to them? A lot of times it's it's lifestyle. It's about your lifestyle. The life that we live preach the loudest sermons. It's not words sometimes, just people watching the way you live. And they see your love. They see your devotion. They see your love for Christ, your love, loving your neighbor. And they see that. And that speaks volume. Please don't think you're doing this in vain. Please don't think you're doing it in vain. We got to take back what the devil has stolen. We got to take it back. That's what I was talking about. Torture. Man. We got to give him torture. We got to take back what he's stolen. Because the, the, the scripture declares him the prince of the power of the air. And the reason why he received that particular label because in Genesis chapter 1, the Lord... made man and the sixth day he made man he he gave him rulership authority he told him to be fruitful and multiply Genesis 126 he told him to be fruitful and multiply right he says then God said this is Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So he gave man dominion, but man relinquished, he relinquished the dominion to the devil in Genesis chapter 3 taken from the tree so the woman listened to the serpent gave to her husband he took it disobeyed God and therefore relinquished his dominion so now we got this uh, sin problem fast forward centuries later we see mass shootings, hate crimes Robbery, murder, rapes, stealing, lying, and adultery, fornication. You see this manner of sin. And there's one solution. And that solution is getting back to grateful. Getting back to Jesus. Yielding yourself to Jesus. Give Jesus a chance. For those of you that don't know him. I implore you today, I beseech you, I urge you today to give Jesus a chance. He will make a way. He will make the change. He, he will make he, he will make the difference. Sometimes I conversate with folks and they say, not ready yet I gotta stop doing this and stop doing that first and stop doing that if that was the case you, 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 we're stopping you from stopping that we are limited you know in the natural 
we're limited. We are limited in the natural, and there is nothing victorious, successful that we can do unless we have Jesus Christ. He is the one that's going to make that change. You don't, you know, concern yourself with, oh man, I got to stop doing this first, stop doing that, because it's never going to come about. You trying for multiple years. Think about it. And think about you know how long you've been living. Certain things you do you don't want to do. You say, oh man, I can't believe I've done that again. Oh man, I'm gonna stop doing it. I'm oh man, oh man, I need I need, I, I need to stop that. We say these things, and it's real clear. It's a clear solution. You don't have to live in shame and, and, and oh man I gotta stop I gotta change you don't have to live like that you can let Jesus do it surrender yield to the spirit of God surrender to Christ let cast your cares upon him because he cares for you he cares for you so how low will you go to reach somebody else for, no, we, we're talking now to save folks again how low will you go to reach your loved ones Lockdown. Loved ones. Many miles away. Loved ones that seem like they'll never change. There's hope for them. And a lot of times, the Jesus that people will see will be the Jesus that's in you you have to let your light shine the Bible declares in Matthew chapter 5 verses uh, uh, sixteen verse sixteen Matthew five sixteen it reads let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Check out the verses before that, right? It says, 13th verse. We will read from 13 to 16, it reads. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Friend, friend it is high time it's high time the nonsense is played out it was never in but Christ is coming back he's coming back for a church without spot or blemish or wrinkle he's coming back the question then will you be ready <laughs> Will you be ready? He's coming back. Jesus. Jesus went to the lowest of lows. He went to the lowest of lows for them. He. He resurrected. And he resurrected. And he's coming back for us. But the question is, will you be ready? For, for, for you that are not saved, you know, and you're tuning in, you got to know some things. You got to know that um, you have no protection. No protection, meaning this. You are not, you are not under the ark of 
safety because the Lord is coming back and if the Lord would come would you be able to say receive me Lord when the Lord comes will you be able to be one of those he says well done thou good and faithful servant enter in think about it and look at yourself and say man are my sins forgiven your are your sins forgiven are you you clean your wash clean in the blood of the land are you called from from sin to salvation from darkness to light because one day God is going to require from us he's got a question he's going to ask everybody nobody escapes he's going to he's going to say what'd you do with my son Jesus Christ I sent him down there he lived a sinless life he was tried and so forth he was, was crucified he was buried he resurrected he was crucified and buried. He went to hell and he preached in the spirits for three days. He, he resurrected. Now, what did you do with that? What did you do with him? He sacrificed his life for your sins. What did you do with him? And I want you to know something. You know, there's, you know, discussions about you know, this religion, that religion, or who's religion, or who's right, who's wrong, what this and that. Listen, there is not nothing let me say there is nothing but one way there is no way but one way there's one way to the father and that way is through Jesus Christ he is the way he's the way the truth and the life nobody comes to the father but by him so again have your sins been forgiven are you washed in the blood you gotta ask yourself these things are you washed in the blood And if you know you've not been washed in the blood, you know you're not saved, you know that the Lord is prompting you right now, Moses. He's tugging at you. Repeat these words you know, after me. Say, Father God, I come before you in the precious, mighty, and wonderful name of Jesus. Lord, I come before you. I admit, Lord, I am a sinner. I know I need a change in my life, the change that only Jesus can give. I'm sorry for my sins. I want to turn from my wicked ways. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to come into my heart. Make me a new creature. I present myself to you, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. Purge me with your hyssop. Purge me, cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Be my personal Lord and Savior. I believe you died on the cross for my sins, Jesus. You rose the third day. You rose with all power in your hand. And you see the now the right hand of the Father. You make intercession for the saints. I want to be one of those saints. Receive me, Lord Jesus. Save me today. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. I thank you, Lord, for your love and your mercy change me i surrender to you in jesus name i pray amen friend if you have said that prayer you just got saved it's simple it's not all these hoops that we think we got to jump through it's simple if you said that prayer i want you to share with somebody i want you to contact us we can be reached once again at 424 203 Nine six five one. Another number you can uh, um, is uh, uh, my particular number two is eight four three two two four seven seven two six. Call us. Reach out to us. We, we, we will minister to you. We'll share with you. We'll walk you through this. Disciple you. Worldwide, 
you're in another nation or something, right? Reach out to a church, a Bible believing church. You got friends that are saved, contact those. You got family members that are saved, contact them. Share with somebody and get into a Bible believing church filled with the Holy Ghost and get mature in this thing, nurtured in this thing, and grow with the Lord and walk with God because He'll never turn His back on you. He turned His back on Jesus so that He won't turn His back on you. Yo, hey, uh, drop that song. Mm -hmm more than enough because he's more than enough and you're going to see and you're going to realize it's clear that you ain't going to need nothing else because he is more than enough for us he's more than enough listen to this Tempted to be unthankful, I can look around and see your many blessings for that I'm grateful, and I'm growing closer to thee. Please don't let me get unthankful. That right there is my plea, and I don't have to search in the Father, cause Father, you're more than enough, more than enough, more than enough, more than. I'm feeling alone, discouraged you always there I don't really have to care, cause I know you're never, I know you're here Friends turn their back on me, people that talk about me But I thank you Lord, I thank you Lord Cause you always walking with me, you see me through More than enough, more than enough, more than Listen to this. You ain't gotta look up to see stars with right tears. Clear that the brain travels more than them light years in one year. No, for sure when we're done here. Barricaded souls, they get spun here, run where. Ever you see liberty, my stability, got my agility, got the elements filling me, the relevant appealing to me. I'll point them to Christ, show them a stripe, right from wrong, I'm anointed for life. I'm a jackknife, saved by grace, a pack life, attack mics with rigor. Crack pipes break them in twos and threes, seize degrees, the heebie jeebies that get the up on the enemy. Relentless in my pursuit, in the event this immenses into a tempest, I regroup, respond with a speedy truth. Never leap without a parachute, or weather heat, but pile up aloof. The destinations in clear view, falling in rear view. Now would you listen and adhere to sound doctrines and principles, everything that is sensible and indispensable, or trade it all for a fall that is sure to come. There's no escape from the pit, so what would you run? Would you come to your senses, avoid the senseless, keep faith and temperance in Christ and remembrance? More than enough. That's the remix version. You guys have to go check it out. I'm going to say it again. J Scribbles, YouTube. Spotify, no matter what streaming platforms, 
J Scribbles. Instagrams, Jason Scribbles. One word. You got to follow it, guys. Check it out. New music is dropping constantly. I uh, just got through releasing a project a couple weeks ago, a uh, 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 mixtape. A couple weeks ago, I'm dropping new videos near future in their music. Get linked in, get plugged in, get this word and grow on it and bear fruit. Share, reach out, share this fruit, share this word, share the changes you've seen and you will continue to see in your life. Linking up to the cross, share, keep God first and keep the Lord first. He paid it all. He paid it all for us. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, but he washed it white as snow. I had to jump through no hoops. You ain't had to jump through no hoops. He did it. He did it all. Now he just saying, receive it by faith. What's faith? It is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. And we've all been dealt the measure of faith. You got, maybe you say to yourself, well, mine's a mustard seed faith. I don't think I got all that kind of faith. Hey, you can move a mountain with mustard seed faith. He says it right there in his word. So, so then, Watch this. Stir up the gift. That's when Paul told Timothy. Stir up the gift. That's the word the Lord is saying to us. He's telling us. Stir up the gift that's in you. Maximize your full potential. Grow on that thing. You have to spend time with him. Have to spend one-on-one -on -one time with him. You have to keep God first. You spend one-on-one -on -one time. Love the Lord. Love your neighbor. Get into the word. Prayer. Meditation. Praise him. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him for his excellent greatness. Praise him for who he is. Praise him for what he has done. What he's doing now and what he will do. Praise you the Lord. Praise. He inhabits the praises of his people. He said that in his word. So when you praise him, you're growing your spirit too. You're tapping into it. You're summoning. You're summoning more of the spirit. Praise him. Grow and bear fruit. Love you guys. We're closing, you know, in a few, in a, a few minutes. We're closing up. We'll leave you with this. I'm going to leave you with this. Jesus loves you. He loves us. He gave his life for us. How low will you go to win your friend, your family, your co-worker? May God add a blessing unto you. And you guys enjoy your day. I hope this word has helped somebody. I know the Lord is moving. Receive it. Receive it with God. Meekness with gladness. May God forever bless you. Remember, log on. J Scribbles. J Scribbles. YouTube, Spotify, SoundCloud, Instagrams. Jason Scribbles. One word. I'll see you guys next time. May God bless. He's more than enough. He's more than enough for me. Praise your name, Lord. Jesus is more than enough. And God bless you guys.